Hey everybody, this is Taylor James here at New Dude. Today, we're going to be going over your very first day on the island. So when you first join, chances are you'll be in a closed hotel room. Don't freak out, this isn't your prison cell. But all you have to do to exit is press your E button, hold it down, and up here, you'll select inventory. Use it with your mouse. Once you do that down here, you'll see the motel key. Go ahead and click on that and press the take key. You could call this the grab key. So press this and you'll see up there at the top left, I've removed a key from my pocket. Fantastic. That's all we really need to do. Now we run over to our door and you'll see there's this open icon. It says lock and unlock door. Go ahead and hit the space bar. Once you do that, the door has been unlocked. You can hit the space bar again once you see close slash open door and it'll open. You can go ahead and jog down there. And just to make sure you don't lose the key in case anything happens, go ahead and press put it back. It will be now back inside your inventory. So the best way to get around the island is by driving. There's no doubt about that. The island is quite large and there's many, many roads connecting from the very top to the very, very bottom. There's also another island. You could take boats and you could drive along here too. Every new player starts off with a vehicle, and I would argue it's one of the best vehicles in the game. To go, you'll have to spot the garage. The garages, at least here in Elk City, were right across from me. There are these orange or these red and brown sheds. Now that you're here at the garage, go ahead and hover over the middle. You should see this little icon, and if you haven't noticed already, selecting all these various scroll menus is accomplished by pressing the spacebar. So go ahead and press the space bar to access your garage. And here in your garage, you'll see at least one vehicle. If you're older, if you've been on server mode, you'll obviously see more. But everyone starts off with a Ford Crown Victoria. Go ahead and select that. You should see about 100% gas there. You'll see your actual license plate. You go press retrieve. Once it does that, you'll have 30 seconds to access it. The garage door will open. You will come over here. You'll have to unlock the door first. Hop in his driver again by pressing space bar. Unlock your locator by double tapping the alt button, selecting in ignition, and driving forward. That's all you need to do to start driving on the island. In order to drive a vehicle, you will need to get a driver's license. Thankfully, we all know new players can't get to the DMV without driving. So thankfully, there is a five-day beginner's per learner's permit. It's a full-use license for private use, such as this, driving your vehicle and driving yourself across the island. But at the end of the five days, you'll need to go to the DMV and complete your license. If you have any more questions, we will have a separate video all about vehicles that includes the driver's license exam. So now that you're on the island, it's best to get familiar with the big cities. We have a whole separate video explaining how the map works. It's a quick one. It kind of covers all this, but we also have a separate video talking about the different cities by taking a tour of them. I highly encourage you to check out that video as well. The main indicators you want to be aware of are City Hall, the DMV here in Silverton, which is at the very bottom of the map. That's where you can get your license. Your orange arrow is the indicator of where you are located. Now, be known that if you accidentally press the hide all, everything will leave. And if you select a specific one, your indicator will disappear. The only way you could do that is display all. So you may see at the bottom right, you have three different indicators. The heart representing your health, the water drop representing your thirst, and the dinner plate in silver are representing your hunger. You can see I'm halfway empty with my thirst and I'm quite low on hunger. Every new player starts off with some sodas and some burgers. So by accessing them, you will once again hold down your E muscle, aka your E key, going to inventory, finding a food, and selecting how much you want to eat at the time. I'm just going to take three for now because apples don't fill you up very far. Go ahead and press this grab or this use object icon. It will Indicate there to the left how many you took and that it did successfully. Go ahead and press your E key again and eat. 
you'll see over to the left that you have successfully ate one apple and it satisfies six hunger. Go ahead and do this however many times you may need to eat. At the right side, you'll see my name and my employment status. My employment status will change if I have a new job or currently, like it says now, I'm unemployed. There are several fantastic beginner jobs that earn you a good paycheck on the island, including some that provide you their own vehicle. I highly encourage you to check out our several videos referencing several different jobs. I would highly recommend the Better Buy job. It pays by far the most and it lets you drive around the island going to some of the major key areas. It's a great way to get familiar. So some other things you may need to know on your first day here on the island. Talking locally, if you see a person in front of you, is accomplished by using your TeamSpeak app. You need to ensure you're in the task force radio lobby. And you're, if you'll see your name become encrypted, that's why we don't know who's, who we're talking to by cheating. It's all accomplished in-game. To do that, either just speak if you have your mo mic open or use your push-to-talk button. I highly recommend you use a push-to-talk. That way you can talk to yourself privately or do anything like that, make some sounds without other people hearing. It is uh, locally based, so if a player is near me, they will hear me, but if they're halfway across the map, they won't. It's a great way to really feel like you're on a real island. Your number keys up at the top of your keyboard accomplish some really important things. Number one, high five, or a wave. It's most often a wave is a great way to interact with someone and for them to know you're talking to them. Number two, is to give them the middle finger. That's used probably more than any other on this island. Number three is a point. Eyes to, eyes to fingers. It's a great way to point at an item, to know, all right, I hear you, or to reference another thing. Number four is one of the first dance moves. And this will just keep going until you once again press the four button and it will kick you out of it. Number five is another dance. And let it be known, you can combine some of these. That being number six is the dab. Number seven. And number eight. This is number nine. And that is all the dance moves, plenty to express your feelings here on the island. Every new player starts off with a cell phone. This is how we communicate, how we dial 911, and some other useful apps. To access your cell phone, you'll press the G key. Here at the white numbers, you will see the in-game phone number. Here at the bottom, you'll see the online faction. This is best to know if there are any paramedics on, best represented by the fire EMS logo, or if you're stranded at sea, if there are any Coast Guard on. The other law enforcement factions are located here. Several roleplay elements, i.e. robbing, hostage taking, or something similar, require a basic amount of law enforcement on. You can find more about that in the rules or our guide to RP video. To access the rest of your cell phone, go ahead and click with your mouse and you'll see you have your basic phone. The top, the top left is just for companies. It's how you manage payroll and purchases. No need to worry about that. The Uber icon is your Uber. You could call an Uber, become an Uber driver, or quit the Uber driver profession. It's a great way to make some money if you are on the island, but not actively wanting to pursue a job. But be aware, it's not the busiest because most people have their own vehicle. The Twitter icon is how you chat in the game. You can see all the chat messages appear at the bottom left. Here to the right is the calculator. It is a perfectly functioning calculator. Great for doing some quick math without having to pull out your actual phone. This question mark is a future guide coming. Right now you can just refer to our videos. This blue icon here is your bank. This is where you can see your bank status and do some other bank related activities. Here is the kind of keys. It's, you know, the world's going digital. So a lot of keys are now digital. So you can see here I had the keys to my vehicle. Here is an app for gangs and criminals. We have no need for that here. This is for faction leaders to issue commands to many. This here lets you know some of the time frames for if you are producing something in a factory or the import ship. If you have any questions about this, we have videos about factories, but we also offer a service where we go to each factory and explain to you and help you understand how each one works. 
and here is your XP. XP lets you do several things. As you can see, this red icon or this red bar is the same on the app. The biggest app or the biggest apps you will use are down here. Your phone. You can type in a player number and press the ca the caps lock button to speak to them, just like an actual phone call. Here is your contacts. Here are your settings. You could add another SIM card at the cell phone store. You could change what you want to know, show and graph, use metrics, IDs, or Twitter. You could turn all that stuff off. You could also change the sound. Go ahead and tap on the messaging icon. Here, you could send text messages. You could start a new conversation with the plus button. Or here at the emergency services, you could go ahead and contact 911. Any 911 related organization or faction could be reached here. So Coast Guard, Fire, Sheriff, DOJ, anything like that. So go ahead and type your emergency here. It'll give you a little bit of a blurb on the map so they know where to find you. Just the best way to contact 911, and this is very important because accidents do happen, is state your location. If, let's say, we're by the McFishers in Elk City, it says McFishers is right here. Your conditions and who you need. They'll be there incredibly fast. If you are not near a location, try to throw your position indicator right here. But it is always easiest to go off a well-known waypoint. Another important menu is your medical menu. You can access this by holding down the e-muscle. We will have a whole separate video talking about how you treat wounds and stuff like this. But if you see issues here, you should quickly call EMS and get some help. One important part about being a member of this island is contributing to the local economy. One of the best ways to do that is to purchase fuel. Fuel stations are ran and operated by players. So there's a chance it could be empty, or there's a chance it could be at a great discount. So here, you pull up to a gas station. Be sure to lock your car, because you never know who could come along. I would encourage you to come and speak to the cash register, select the fuel station pumps, and you'll see here the price, but you also see here the gallons of fuel storage. You see there is zero gallons. Not a big deal. There are plenty of other gas stations on the island. We're still going to describe how to get gas here. To get gas, I would encourage you to go into first person, hover over the gas pump, express bar, grab fuel pump, walk over to where your fuel is. It changes on a bunch of different cars. You'll see there the connect pump option. Once you connect to the pump, go ahead and look at the handle. Sometimes you need to remove space bar, toggle fuel pump. You'll see there's no fuel in this storage, but if there is, it will start pumping. The average on the island is $45 a gallon, which would average about $60. Once you want to remove it, go ahead and press space bar to pick up the handle and come back here. You turn fuel pump. Just like that, you're all solved. Make sure to do that though, because if you drive off with it still connected, it will wreck your car. Sometimes driving on the island is really dark. Best way to turn on the brights, hold E, toggle high beams. Because it's daytime, we won't see it now, but that is a really bright light and you should have no problem seeing the road. There are some hotkeys, including on the forms that speed up that process and you don't need to press your E menu. Up at the top left, you should see the gray box. It shows the current status in white of the different parts. If one of them is red or yellow, that means they're either broken, if red or yellow, damaged and needing repair. They'll go over that in the vehicle's guide if you need any help repairing. You'll see our current speed speedometer, as so you know how to stay within the speed limits. And that yellow bar there, that represents how much fuel we have. To store a vehicle, go ahead and pull it right up to the storage unit. You don't want to hit it, and you want to make sure there's enough distance. Go ahead and once again select it. You'll want to use your scroll wheel to select store vehicle. The door will open and you'll have a little bit of time to get it back in. Go ahead and hop in. Start up the car. Exit and leave the storage unit. You'll want to stand back. Don't be in it. And once the garage door shuts, your vehicle will be stored. Perfect. So now you can run over, vehicle garage, and there it is. And that's how you store your vehicle. 
And this will do it for this video. Again, my name is Taylor James, new dude, and I highly encourage you to check out the rest of our guide that really will get you the best start to the island. If you have not played Armor 3 Fisher's Life, I highly encourage you to check it out at armor3fisherslife.net.